Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back with the Ancient Scholar and today we're going to go ahead and finish up with this Graham's Law business. So let's just go ahead and do a quick recap. Recap, the underlying intuition of Graham's Law is that the more dense a gas is, the less or the less quickly it will diffuse. Likewise, if a gas is less dense, it will diffuse more quickly. And in the case of all these calculations, we're actually doing the calculation for diffusion through air, uh, through a gas, versus through a liquid or a membrane. Again, I don't think it's necessarily as important at, at the level of basic respiratory physics course to go ahead and go into the calculations through membranes and through liquids uh, when pretty much the same intuition holds true at, at the level of a liquid or a membrane that, uh, look, if something is more density to it, or more atomic mass, it is going to diffuse slowly, more slowly than something that has less uh, mass. Now, when we talk about diffusion, remember that is the movement of a gas or particle or whatever from an area of high concentration to low concentration. There's also another concept known as solubility, and solubility is something I'll talk about in a different videos. So don't get solubility, how, uh, how soluble something is because that intuition of solubility does not apply here. This is just diffusion, the movement of high concentration to low concentration. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and do the basic, um, or not the basic, but a little more complicated calculation than hydrogen and helium. And let's take oxygen and carbon dioxide. They're the two gases that our respiratory tract, our system deals with um, on a daily basis, a second, uh, <laughs> second hour, minute, uh, etc. We deal with these two gases quite a bit in our, our day to day existence. So I'm going to take oxygen, I'm going to make that V1. I'm going to take carbon dioxide, I'm going to make that V2. And then what I need to do is I need to find, uh, I, need, I need my periodic table of elements, I need to find the, the mass of each of these. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my oxygen. It says 15.99, etc. And I could round that to 16, that's close enough for government work. Why do I have 32 here? Well, the periodic table of element is look, elements excuse me, is looking at oxygen as an atom, atomic oxygen, a single atom. However, we know that the oxygen gas that we deal with is not atomic oxygen, it's molecular oxygen. It is two oxygen atoms that are bound through multiple covalent bonds. So we need to take into, into consideration that we're actually talking about two atoms, and that's 16 plus 16 gives us 32. <clears throat> okay, next I need to go ahead and look at carbon dioxide, CO2. Well, I know that I have two oxygens here, so what I can do is I can put a 32 there, so then I have one carbon, and I look at carbon, and it says 12.01, etc. Close enough for government work, I can round that to 12. So I have 12 here. 12 plus 32 gives me 44. So I've got my masses. Then all I need to do is I just need to plug them into my formula here. So mass 2, well this is 2 here, right? So this 44 gets plugged in here. Mass over mass 1, well I made oxygen 1 and I plug it in there. So then what happens is, we'll drop down here and I need to take the square root of 44 over the square root of 32. You can plug that into your calculator. Find the square root of 44 first. Square root of 44 should equal about 6.633 and that's good enough for government work I think. Square root of 32 is going to be 5.657 or close enough. Okay. So then what we do <coughs> is we need to go ahead and reduce this, right? So I'm going to come over here, and the way I reduce this, just like we did in the first formula of hydrogen helium, is I divide the bottom into the top, right? So 5.657 goes into 6.633, and I just type that into my calculator. I type 6.633 divided by 5.657. and what I should get is a number 1.17. And 
I can even put that over 1 if I wanted to. And what does that tell me? Well, if we plug this back in up here, 1.17 over 1, that tells me that oxygen diffuses 1.17 times faster than carbon dioxide. And does this make sense? Well, what's the underlying intuition of Graham's Law? The underlying intuition is that the more massive, more dense gas is going to diffuse more slowly. That would be carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide's a 1, 1.17, oxygen diffuses quickly, it's less dense, so this intuitively makes sense, and it also, so it qualitatively makes sense, and now it quantitatively makes sense. Yep, everything checks out, math looks good, we can say oxygen diffuses faster than carbon dioxide. Okay guys, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that brings a little better understanding to this whole Graham's Law business. Alright guys, take care. Thanks for hanging in there.